Hi, this is Bill, and I wanted to give you an idea of how to make your computers uh, child safe. So the first step is to set passwords for all the accounts that are used. The default account that is usually created when you start a Windows 7 or XP machine is the administrator's account. We really don't want to use that account for the kids. They'll be able to undo everything you want. So the first thing, we still need to set a password for the administrator account. So go ahead and do that and type in a password hint to remind me you know, something about what the, the password is. Once we've done that, now we can begin to create the user accounts for the kids. So we go back to the same spot we started, add or remove user accounts, and then we'll create a new account. We'll just go ahead and call it uh, user2 and make sure that the standard user is uh, selected. Don't create them as an administrator. And we'll create the account. Once that's done, we need to set the password so that it has a unique password that the child knows. If you know the password, that's fine. But uh, you want to make sure that the child knows it and is using it to log in. So we'll set a password for user2. Insert your child's name, obviously. And then once we've accomplished those uh, first tasks, now we can set up the parental controls for the child's user account. So we'll go ahead and select user2. And it shows us there that it's password protected. want to make sure that we set enforcing on, otherwise any of the settings we do won't make any difference. Now out of the box, uh, Windows will have time limits, games, and uh, allowed programs as settings. We can add more features to this, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So the time limits is the hours that they're allowed to use the computer. So in this case, we'll allow them to use it from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The wide area dictates or designates the time that they can get on. Now games are restricted in a couple ways. Um, so the child can either, you can allow them to play games or not play games, and then you can set game ratings, uh, assuming the game actually is rated. I'm going to set this to everyone 10 plus. And then if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of real granular settings uh, if the publisher had put them in. Uh, you can use those to filter on the games that they can use. So now we can, if the game has no ratings, you can actually put them into the always allow. That way, the alternate is obviously the user rating setting, but if they're not rated, then they wouldn't be able to play it. So to allow them to play unrated games, you have to come in here and click the always allow. So now games are set up. We can click OK. The other thing we can do is allow or block specific programs. So that currently is off, so we want to set some of those. We can allow them to use all programs or just the ones that we allow. I like to get a little more granule. I don't want them running uninstallers and some other things like that, even though they may be blocked by other things. But you can scroll down and basically check the boxes you want them to be able to use. So that's what comes out of the box. Now, one of the things I was concerned with is web browsing and using use of the web. So let me show you how to set up and install uh, Microsoft Family Safety Live. So it's not installed by default in Windows 7 or XP. It's an additional add-on. So I'm going to use Bing, even though I don't know how to type very well. Um, it'll still find it for me. So we can do Family Safety Live download. And you want to make sure you download it from Microsoft. Don't go to a, another site and get it straight from Microsoft. That way you're sure you're getting the actual, uh, the real program instead of something else pirated or, or hacked. So let me go ahead and maximize this. We'll click the download button. And once that process starts, uh, we can begin the install. And I will tell you, it takes a while to install once we get to that point. I trimmed a lot of this off. It takes about 15-20 minutes to, to run through. But I won't make you suffer through watching that whole process. So once we get going, 
we also don't want to install everything that comes with Live Essentials, so I'm going to choose the programs that I want to install. I'm not going to do the recommended. I don't want Messenger. I don't want Windows Live Match. It's, it's going away anyway. Bing Bar, get rid of it. Mail, no. Writer and Messenger Companion. We just want the Photo Gallery, which is fine, Movie Maker, and Family Safety, the important one. So here's where I trimmed. Boom! We're almost done. This is about 15 minutes time lapse here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now once we get this up and running, you'll find it down in the task bar in the, the sys tray. But it's not going to be there until we turn it on and enable it. So it's installed, we just haven't quite configured it yet. So let me search for family. It'll bring up Windows Family Live Safety. And I'll go ahead and start that. And you'll see that you need an account. So this will be the parent's account that manages all of the children. Uh, you can use this dialog to sign up for an account uh, on Windows Live. If you already have one, use that, put the credentials in and then you can begin to manage the kids. There are a few more steps that get kind of different depending on how you go in to create the accounts for the kids, but uh, this is the gist of what it is. So here we are. We're up and running in Family Safety. So we're going to monitor this account. We need to associate the local account with the Windows Live account. So that's what we're doing in this step. So I'm going to select the user2 family member that I've already created. So we'll add that and then save. And that makes the connection between the local account and the Windows Live account. The nice thing is, is now I'll be able to use Windows Live website to manage the settings instead of just coming to the computer. I'll be able to do it remotely and we'll go over that here in a minute. So once the association is made, we could go back to the dialogs that you saw earlier and there'll be an additional set of uh, things that we could do. But I'm going to go to the Family Live uh, site and show you how you can do this remotely. That way if the kids ever need to have you update things and you aren't home, you'll be able to come to this site and do those things. So let's scroll down, find User 2, edit their settings, now what we've added with Family Live that we didn't have before is add web filters, activity reports, and being able to do their requests. With Windows 8, you'll also have additional, in addition to that, uh, the ability to restrict the number of hours the kids can log in. So for web filters, I always choose allow list only. This puts the least amount of load on the computer. If you do Design for Children or some of these other ones, then I don't know who picks what's appropriate for my kid. Uh, I'd much rather say these are the whitelist sites that you can go to. So we go into Web Filtering, and I can type in the name of a website, click on Allow. Now, in this particular instance, that's the only website they can go to. So I'll save the settings. There's Activity Reports, a few other features uh, that are nice. You can look at the requests. Let's look at the time limits. You'll see it's set up basically the same as we did uh, when we did it on the local computer. It pulled those settings over and said, hey, here's what you set. So that's kind of nice. It shows you that they are integrated and they do talk to each other. Game restrictions, we'll see that the settings that I had, everyone 10 plus, is there. Um, and the apps. The app restrictions on this one, it's a little different. If it's checked, they can't get to it. If it's unchecked, they can. So checking blocks the site. So now here you can go and view any of the requests that the kids had. We'll see that in a minute. And you can authorize or, or reject any of the requests. Contact management, it's changing soon, so I can't really show you much about how that's going to work. They're actually going to expand the functionality of that soon which will be really nice. You'll be able to have a little more or a lot more control over uh, who the, the kids can talk to online. Activity reporting will give you a summary, show you their web activity, the stuff they've done on the PC, how many hours they've been, how many hours they went to a website, the website, the most uh, frequently used websites and all kinds of neat, neat, neat information about that. So that's pretty much it. Let me pop in and show you now uh, an actual kid's account 
and we'll see family safety is up and running and we can open the filter if you've made a change they'll need to come in here and hit refresh to be able to get the new settings and you'll see down at the bottom it'll pop up and say you've already got the latest settings so if they've made a request and you've authorized them they have to go here in order to get those settings implemented I think it refreshes every so often but that'll do it right away so we'll see here browsing the web becomes difficult which is kind of what we want it, Java won't run you have to enable that so there's a little bit of pain going through setting this up but once you, you, hopefully you're using this to monitor what the, ch what the kids are up to but you can see you can ask in person or email a request so we'll see that YouTube you can't get their programs or the, the web page is blocked they can ask for permission the nice thing is is you can do web pages all the way out to an individual video if there was just one video you wanted them to see you can authorize them to see that but nothing else on YouTube so the links can be fairly lengthy so we've sent off a request just to kind of show this would be in that web page under requests that we saw earlier so can they play games well sure any of the stuff that we've gone in and said yeah you can do uh, are fine so we'll see a solitaire launch here in a minute and that it won't have any pop-ups or, or uh, you know saying that family safety is blocked it it'll load and off they go play in solitaire this could be any game obviously it doesn't have to be just solitaire but any of the games or any apps that you've allowed them to do so let's see if uh, any other programs won't work let's try uh, the Bing desktop so this is blocked by family safety so now in Windows 8 they would actually with these not just get an OK they'd actually be able to ask for permission they've really uh, fine-tuned and I love the family safety in Windows 8 it works much much better so again hit refresh if you made any updates allowed kids to get in know that they aren't going to be able to turn this off um, it'll be in the sys tray and if you want to turn it off you can put in your credentials to be able to turn off family safety so there you can just type in the password and it would be removed so there you have it family live and keeping your kids safe